And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome. We are going to do some kitchen hacks for you today. We're going to do several things that will make your life easier on a day-to-day -day basis. And I wanted to start out with something that I do each and every week. Now, I am a busy working mom, just like so many of you out there. Even if you're not a parent, you're busy. You've got jobs, you've got responsibilities, you've got things you've got to do. One of the easiest things to do to make your life much easier is to do meal planning. Now, I, you know, I don't know about your house, but at my home every single afternoon when I get my children from school, one of the first questions, and sometimes it's in the morning before I take them to school, is what are we having for dinner? Five o'clock in the evening is not the time to be deciding that. What I do is on the weekend, typically Sunday afternoon, or Saturday afternoon, I get out my calendar that I keep. I'm an old fashioned person. I don't, I keep my calendar in a written calendar and not on my phone, but I, I get out my calendar and I look at my week ahead and I have something like this. I have several different kinds of these little things. You can eat, just use a regular calendar. You can just use a piece of paper and do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and so forth and so on. And I will, Somewhere on that calendar, you don't have to use this specific one. This is just so happened to be the ones I'm using right now. I will put down, okay, I have, um, you know, uh, one of my boys may have basketball practice from six to eight. I may have a doctor appointment at 1.30 or, you know, like I'm taping, taping. Whatever my schedule is, I put down here so that I can look at it and say, okay, I'm not going to have a whole lot of time on this day because we've got to be done and out the door by 530 to get to ball practice. All right. Then I will take my, no, this is what I do. I take my grocery stores that I typically shop at and I get their flyers and I meant to bring them with me today and I forgot them, but you know what I'm talking about. Mine come out on Wednesdays and I look at what they have on sale and I will say, okay, well, they've got chuck roasts on sale this week and I need something I can put in the crock pot. And so I will just put roast and then potatoes and whatever I'm cooking with it and I'll make out my menu. And then I can take my grocery list and at the same time I'll have a separate sheet of paper and I write out my grocery list based on what I'm gonna need that week. I don't have time to go to the grocery store every day. So I, I try to use up things that will go bad quickly first, like lettuces and berries and things like that. I want to use those within a few days of grocery shopping, whereas cabbage or carrots, that kind of thing can stay fresher a little longer. But if you will do this and every day, just make up whatever you want to eat. Take my cookbook if you want to, like the um, any one of, I, I typically will take you know, a cookbook and I'll flip through it based on what's on sale and decide on what I'm going to eat. And I'll put a little sticky note in there to mark the page and then make my menu. And then I take this right here, tear it off because this is a pad of these things and put it on my refrigerator so that I know every single day what I am cooking for dinner. And I promise you, if you will take an hour It'll take you about an hour the first time you do it till you get used to doing it. I can have it done in 30 minutes, have my grocery list made and go to the store. And then when I get home, I go ahead and wash and chop my onions. I go ahead and cut up the celery and the carrots and all of the things that I'm gonna need for that week to save time. 
On nights when you've got to be out the door easier, plan on doing a crock pot meal or something very, very quick cooking, something that you can cook in 30 minutes, whatever your family likes. It will be easier on your budget because you're going to save money because you're not going to be pulling through the fast food to grab it on the go because you've planned ahead. That's just a quick little easy thing that I do every single week. And it really takes the stress out of that question, what's for dinner? And it makes your life much simpler. And another thing, take a, a, a piece of paper or a legal pad, whatever you use, put a piece of paper on your refrigerator. And as you run out of something, go ahead and keep a running grocery list so that when you go to the store, you don't have to think, what do I need at home? These little hints will make your life so much simpler. Just a quick little easy thing that I do every week. All right, now we are all busy people and there are times when you're in the kitchen cooking that you, you know, need help to get things done quicker or less messy. I am the first to say I am a messy cook. Can't help it, that just is the way it is. One of the things that I think I make a mess, pouring things, especially anything out of one container into another it will spill all over the place. But if you will take a bowl and put a spoon, any kind of spoon, just some kind of something in your bowl and then pour, what happens is this disperses the liquid that you're using and it won't splash all over the kitchen counter. Works like a charm. And it doesn't have to be water. I'm just using water in this case. This is just a wooden spoon, but you can use any kind of a, um, you know, any, like this or this, anything like that, just to kind of break that fall. Whereas if you go straight in, it will hit that liquid and it'll splash out everywhere. So there's a quick little hint for you to cut down on the splashes and the splatters in the kitchen. Got all kinds of these things. How many times have you gone to your cabinet to pick up um, a glass of some sort? Now I'm using measuring cups today, but it could be just glasses that you've stacked, you know, one in the other one to save room and they get stuck together. Has that ever happened to any of you? Well, what you can do is put ice in the top glass. I'm using measuring cups, but it could be just regular glasses and then take the two of them, set it down in warm water for about a minute or two. What that will do is heat the glass to where the cold contracts, the heat expands just scientifically, and then they will come apart. So if you ever have two glasses stuck together, don't try to force them apart because you could break the glass one or the other and then they're ruined. And you know, even if you get a little chip in it, a microscopic chip that could end up in your food or your drink. And you certainly don't want that. So the next time you have this happen to you, just put some regular little ice cubes in the top, you know, just a few, fill it about halfway full, give it a minute because again, the heat will cause it to contract the just minuscule amounts, all you need. The ice will cause it to shrink and then they will come apart. That works like a charm. When you have things that are stuck together. I don't know about you. I love waffles and I love paninis, but cleaning them is a nightmare, especially if you don't have removable plates. And oftentimes, you won't have removable plates. Now I have two different options for you here. This is a panini maker that's dirty. And you can see all these little grooves in here. That's hard and tedious to stand here with a, you know, towel or something. But if you will take a sponge, just a regular clean kitchen sponge, and take a knife and cut down into the sponge, just a little bit, 
you know, about a fourth of an inch or so all along the sponge. Depending on how tough your sponge is, you might have to make three or four passes. But you get my point. To where it will have little divisions. You see how that's just divided in there? Soapy water on this. I'm just going to show you for demonstrations. But that will get down in those grooves. You see how it just molds down in there and make it a lot easier to clean. If you don't have that, at any store, I got these, just so happened to pick these up at Walmart. But you can also, the dollar stores that are around, you can get these packs of like six or eight toothbrushes for a dollar. They are wonderful for cleaning. Yes, you can brush your teeth with them, by all means, but they're great to have in your kitchen for purposes like this. Warm, soapy water. And you see how much easier that is as opposed to a rag where you would have to take your finger and go down in there. You see what I mean? You gotta have something in there to get down in those grooves. That's tedious and a process that I don't have the patience for. So take a clean toothbrush, just keep it dedicated for this kind of thing, warm soapy water, or take a sponge, like I said, cut little grooves in it, and then keep half of it un uncut if you want to. And that way it will get down in those grooves and make it much, much easier to clean your waffle irons or panini makers, anything like that, makes it a lot easier to clean. So those are just a couple of little hacks, if you will, to do your cleaning with. Another thing is maybe you've got a skillet and you don't have a lid for it. I know most skillets, I don't have one under here right quick, but most skillets, or salt, you know, the, the kind that we use to cook with, a lot of them don't come with lids. And, but you need to have a lid on there to keep in the steam or the moisture or for whatever purpose. Now, I always have these. I get them at the dollar store. You know, usually sold in like a pack of two for a dollar. And then I will just take aluminum foil. Now, this won't create an airtight seal, but it will help to keep the heat in and the splatter in. Just wrap your splatter guard with aluminum foil and then use that as a temporary lid over your skillet on your stove to keep that bacon grease or whatever from, uh, you know, coming out. Or if you're simmering a sauce and you want it to thicken, but you don't want it to evaporate, which it would evaporate through this mesh, there you go. Just use this as a temporary lid in your kitchen and you will be amazed at how well that will work in a pinch if you need it. One of my favorite tools, and let me find it. It's back in the dishwasher, I do believe, is a bench scraper. You've seen me use it umpteen times on the program. It's the thing that you use to move vegetables. I guess out of every piece of cooking equipment that I've ever used on this show, that is the number one question I get. Where did you get that? I have had mine forever. I don't even remember where I got it. But most of the time, you can find them in the baking section of the kitchen sections in the big stores or stores like, you know, uh, Bath, Bed Bath & Beyond or Williams-Sonoma or any kind of a kitchen supply or even the Walmarts and the Kmarts and places like that oftentimes will have them in the baking section. But if you can't find one, these little plastic, thicker plastic, but still flexible boards, you can find them everywhere. Take a pair of scissors, cut it to the size you want. This is about the size of mine. And there you go. A quick little easy scraper to use to get, you know, transfer your onions to your pan or your flour to your dish, whatever you would need to move food wise or to scrape, you know, to clean up your, your board. I use my um, bench scraper. That's the technical term of what that's called for many different purposes. If I'm cleaning the flour off my cutting board, I'll take my bench scraper and then put it in the trash. Or you could use it to move the vegetables. Great little 
invention, if you will, if you don't have one of those metal bench scrapers. Great tool to have if you can find, but if you don't have one and you want to make one, just take a plastic cutting board and you can throw this right in the dishwasher when you're done. Alright, now we're back in the kitchen again. We've got some more little hints and tips for you to make your life so much easier in the kitchen. Have you ever been baking or cooking with eggs? I mean, you know, doing anything with eggs and you put it down on the counter and what happens? It rolls. And then that is a mess to clean up. I don't know of anything that is messier to clean up than eggs. I'm going to show you a little hint. This is just lining uh, the little grippy line paper that you can put in your drawers or in your cabinets. You know what, what I'm talking about. You buy it anywhere. If you will just cut and keep handy a little square of this or a strip of this, then you can put your eggs on there and they don't go anywhere because these are raw eggs and I don't want to clean them up. If you'll keep little things like this handy, it will really help to make your life easier in the kitchen. And another little hint with this is this grip stuff is great for helping you to get a grip on lids, to remove lids. And it's also great if you have a cutting board that likes to slide around. These are slicker. If you'll put that underneath it, they don't move as easy. Whereas if you don't have that underneath, you see how much easier I am not. I'm gonna do it with this. Look at that. It really makes a big difference. These are great little things to have in your kitchen. Just little strips. And I also use this to line my cabinets where I keep my glasses. I just measure it out, cut it, and then I put my glasses and dishes on this and they don't move around and it makes it so much easier. This is great stuff to have. So that's another little hint for you. Now I'll put my eggs over here because I don't want them to break. So we'll keep those on there. Now, have you ever had, now you could do this one in, with your toothpaste too. I buy tomato paste in the tubes because I don't, they come in the little jars, the little cans rather, you know, the little small cans of tomato paste. Well, I don't use a whole can of tomato paste in one recipe and most likely you don't either. So I find these tubes to be much more convenient and I buy tomato paste in this, I buy ginger, ground up ginger, garlic, herb, all kinds of different things. But you know, when you get to a certain point, it, it, it's, you know, it, half of it's up here, half of it's down here. What you can do is take your rolling pin or, you know, any kind of a firm thing and then just press down and roll it up and look there. It really squeezes up the tomato paste to the top. So that way you get every little bit out of there. You're not wasting it. And th that, this is much more convenient than those little jars or the little, you know, the little tins. If you do have those little tins, by the way, on another note, and you only need a tablespoon of it and you've got the rest of that, or you don't want to throw it away. What you can do is take it, put a piece of plastic, um, uh, wax paper, excuse me, or parchment paper, and then put the dollops, like tablespoon dollops of that and freeze it. But I find this is much, much more convenient to have the tube and I keep it in the refrigerator wonderful, wonderful product. And you don't want to waste it. So use your rolling pin to get every little bit out. You could also do this for toothpaste, tubes of toothpaste, same thing. Don't want to waste it, but it's hard. I know, especially with my boys, it's hard. I mean, I go in there and their toothpaste is all, is just squeezed in the middle and every which way, and I'll undo it and I'll take my rolling pin and get it up there so you can get all of your toothpaste out. Great little hint for you. Now, Butter. 
I love butter. Many times a recipe will call for butter to be dotted over the top of a casserole to bake in the oven. And you don't necessarily wanna take that cold butter and cut it into cubes. What you can do is take your stick of butter cold and some kind of a grater. You can use a box grater. You could use this little handheld grater, anything like that. And then take your butter, unwrapped of course, and go over your casserole and it will just give you fine little shavings. It will much more evenly distribute the butter than as opposed to cutting it into cubes and dotting it over there. If you will just grate it over top of your recipe, it will be distributed much more evenly and every bite will have a little bit of butter in it. I use this all the time for cooking. Uh, you know, when you're baking biscuits, and you want, it, you want the butter to be very, very cold in biscuits or pie doughs of any kind, if you will do this and grate the really, really cold butter into the biscuit mix or the pie dough mix, because you want it to be cold, what happens is when it melts, the water poofs it up and that's what makes it fluffy and light. It will be distributed a whole lot more evenly. So instead of cutting it into cubes, just take a big box grater or something and just grate over it and you'll see the biggest difference in your recipes. Now, another question that I get asked a whole bunch is on this little tool. This is called a lemon reamer and I absolutely love this thing. I have had this for probably 10 years. Hand wash only, never, never, never put your wooden utensils in the dishwasher, by the way. That includes your cutting board, wooden spoons, nothing. Do not put wood in your dishwasher. That's why it lasts a long time. I've had this for probably 10 years and it just looks brand new. This is called a wooden reamer, but not everybody has this. Another tool that I like and I use very often because this does not get, you have to do that through a strainer of some sort. So another little tool that I find is wonderful to have is this. This is a little lemon and you put your cut lemon upside down in there and you squeeze, I'm gonna do it over the trash can. And the juice comes out, but the seeds stay in. So this is another little tool that's great to have in your kitchen. But if you do not have either one of these, but you need lemon. Now you'll need to do it over a strainer. Let's see if I got one in my little drawer here. Thought I did, but I don't. Let's find a little strainer. Should have thought ahead and I didn't. Well, you know what I mean, a little mesh strainer. Well, hmm. oh well. Anyway, take a fork and you can go in the center of it and twist the fork around as you squeeze and that will, I'm not gonna do it because it will make a mess on my board, but I can do it over the trash can. But take this and if you'll just twist your fork as you squeeze, then your juice will come out. You'll need to pick the seeds out, but that's a great little substitute if you don't have the reamer or the little juicer. Love those two things, use them all the time. Another little tool that most of us have is this little egg slicer. Now this particular model will do wedges or slices, depending on what you want. And oftentimes a recipe will call for olives or berries, strawberries that need to be sliced. And I might not have any sliced ones. So I use this little thing. I'll just spoon my olives in there. And then I take that and there you go. Put it down and there's your sliced olives for your pastas, salads, your pizza, whatever you've got. Great little tool, not just for eggs. You can use it for strawberries, you can use it for mushrooms, you can use it for many, many, many different things. Here's another version of the same thing. Uh, this is just a slicer. You can put your olives down in there. I happen to love olives of all kinds. Now, not the ones that have the pits in them. They need to be pitted, you know, have the pits out that won't cut through a stone pit of an olive. This is just another version, and you can do the same thing. And there you go. 
there's just some sliced olives. In this case, I'm using olives, but you could use anything, strawberries or mushrooms or whatever you wanted. Another use for a tool that you might possibly have lying around your kitchen. I've got time for one more little kitchen hack. We've got a lot more to do, but we, we'll do one more today. Jalapeno peppers, love them. Use them in many, many recipes. They're hard to, to kind of seed sometimes, but if you'll cut the top off, this, is, uh, this particular one has a melon baller on one end, or this is the melon baller, and this is a tomato that you can get the core out of the tomato. Great use to get your core out of your jalapeno peppers, or cut it in half, and it will take all your seeds out. If you don't have the tomato in, you could just use your melon baller. Great use for that to get your seeds out of your peppers. Be careful if you're using hot peppers because they will burn. That's where the heat is. Make sure you wash your hands before you touch your eyes. Another use for your melon baller. I hope you find these little hints and tips helpful. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.